Hi, I'm John the Engineer Termel, and lesson 20 is my final poetry on what we should do to fix the banking system of the world so we can engineer heaven on earth with nobody poor. So, end of the ballad of the banking system's engineer discussion. The rich man answered after thought, I marvel at the sense, but I'm too old to fight right now, there could be detriments. And should the bankers stop our credit, quickly you would see the workers be transformed to beggars, see to shining sea. Just watch the American news rate recently, right? But cry to think that we're all bound by debt that does increase. The constant strife of debt finance will never ever cease. But sir, it wouldn't be a first, it's happened quite a lot. There's linear in history and rave reviews it got. Historical examples I pointed out were Henry I's tallies, and then Babylon had Hammurabi, and Lydia had Croesus, Sparta, King Lysurgis, Athens had Solon using bronze coinage, and Rome, of course, using copper coinage. I am glad of money. But recent abolitionists, kings, and John, okay, that, uh, there were, these are people I could name, Kings, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Andrew Jackson, Franklin, Edison Ford, Lincoln's Greenbacks, you know, and how they substituted for the Treasury notes. That's explained in previous articles. Now we go on to social credit. The books I read on social credit made the problem clear. The movement's founder, Clifford Douglas, was an engineer. He pointed out that debt was more than money in the game, but since he couldn't stop the growth of debt, he had to claim, more money should be printed so that people have in hand, enough so all the production satisfies demand. Yet interest at zero means no price and money gap. There's no more need to compensate since one-to-one's a snap. Some social credit preachers made their mark and took a stand. They spread the gospel of a friendly credit across the land. Quebec had Louis Evan, who was right in what he preached. Grandfather Adelard Turmel was pleased when words him reached. The two great laws of economics, Granddad said to know, that interest is theft and money has no babies. So... Social credit in Alberta. Alberta had its Bible bill, the Eberhard who fought, taught. Depression suicides were caused by bankers that he fought. He promised them provincial currency with which to trade, but rulings pro the banks by courts in Ottawa were made. Quote, no province has authority to make its currency since only Ottawa has rule over liquidity. Whenever he suggested using plates from treasury, the media declared it funny money theory. We now can see how interesting history can be. Once power wielded with the money plates, we finally see. Just note who operates the plates with government in debt to know who is responsible for policies we get. Even Nazi Germany, even Hitler funded full employment without gold. It's Gottfried Feder, engineer, who saved the VIG, we're told. How was it possible the depression stalked global mob while Germany alone could offer everyone a job? They based the Reichsmark on an hour's worth of work produced. No interest on funding gave economy a boost. Hitler was a racist, but Volkswagens are still bought. If Hitler saved the VIG, is save it too an evil thought? So now you know how Hitler came to power. He used an interest-free banking system to give everybody jobs in the country and the Great Depression while the rest of the world was 25% unemployed at least. Okay, now the youth have a stake. The ones who should decide on this are equal to the task. The ones who've just learned algebra should be the ones to ask. The younger generation who have most at stake in this, I've heard them demonstrate about the poverty abyss. We need more money right away. Our planet's really dying. Won't someone do what should be done? Seems no one even trying. Some of the mathematics may be new to some of you, but find someone to check it out. It's worth the time to do. You might seek out an engineer and show him what I've learned, but you cannot wait till it's too late until the planet's burned. This is the question of the greatest engineering test. Their duty as an engineer mandates their interest. If biosphere is ruined and they haven't done a thing, 
They certainly aren't engineers and they're unworthy of the ring. The question you must pose to them to put this to the test is exponential faulty and is linear the best? A technical inquiry done by systems engineers would strip away the fog that's clouded mankind over years. And since it's ruled by software, it is up to you to tell. By your decision, only can we solve this living hell. To those who care, to those of you who do agree, your challenge is quite clear. The message must be taken to all those you hold so dear. Affecting every one of you, it's something you should fear. The propagation of this inflow must be made so clear. Your means can be most orthodox. No picketing or cap. You just speak right up. Expose the banking system that does sap. And two computer bulletin boards, you may upload this file. Or make some copies to pass out. Right now, not in a while. You must explain how money works, objecting to the flaw. It's something you must really do. Ship Earth needs new bank law. I wrote this ballad with intent to give you all the word, the word of how the money works. I hope you really heard. If you are one who got the word, I must reiterate, the greatest glory goes to he who makes it replicate. Just read the ballad right out loud for any friends to hear. You'll be surprised how readily the word stays in their ear. But for the best reaction, you should try to sing the verse, and you will find to fit the bill so many tunes diverse. If you can spread the word about the plates to those around, so they can wise up others too, to hell they won't be bound. For the reward in heaven, imminent for all who teach, is to attain the place where all the friends of Christ should reach. So after all this educational poetry, you'd think setting the debt slaves free is going to be a pretty big chore, but there is good news. Uh, this was January 26, 2006, and it was an article, American Free Press by Richard Walker. Argentina breaks free of IMF bankers' stranglehold. Now, don't forget, five years early in 2001, the Argentine banking system collapsed. What happened? So that in five years later, they're getting out of debt. Hmm. So, massive debt paid off two years early. Lenders dismayed says Richard Walker. Yeah, I bet they're dismayed, I wrote. With all excess in internal debt for them to charge interest on, cancelled out. And I can explain that. And now their external debt paid off too. The Argentine liberation system has been proven. Now let's see if they tell us about the system that did it, or just report the results as some kind of miracle in this article. So, he wrote, In 2001, the economy of Argentina was declared dead. But it has suddenly come alive and paid off a massive $9.5 billion debt to the International Monetary Fund almost two years ahead of schedule. And I said, suddenly come alive? I announced the rebirth years ago when we found out Monsanto GM Ford had been forced to accept the social currency of farmers' IOUs for grain, thus providing a 1 over S currency that enabled the paydown of internal debts. He continued, the payment which was announced on January the 3rd, 2006, represented a third of the country's federal reserves and was aimed at, once and for all, breaking the financial stranglehold the IMF and its lending partners, the Paris Club, international banks and private lenders, have had for decades on that nation. So I said, ah, the money came from the reserves machine, wherever that is. The move shocked many of those in the financial world who four years ago pronounced Argentina a financial corpse. And of course, I announced years ago that it was going to have a resurgence. Technically, the money system remained a corpse while the social credit system I told you about took over. I hear the governments managed to find a way to lure currency users back to paying interest on what they used to get for a mere service charge, unfortunately. So he continues, at that time there was political unrest, massive unemployment, a failing currency, and ordinary Argentinians lining up outside banks to remove their assets before they evaporated in a complete currency meltdown. Now at this point, I'd advise you to go to Le Production Isca, I-S-C-A, and they have a video called Money, and they had a guy down there when the country went broke, but better yet. They had a guy down there who covered the resurrection by the new system that the people switched to when the banking system went bust. 
So I wrote, something changed, what? So what did work? <laughs> they couldn't put down what did work. They must report a miracle, but they can't report how it came about. Well, I get a chance to explain that and how all the debt got paid off. But all you have to do is Google for Termel and Argentina and you'll find my articles where I predicted Argentina was going to explode into riches and then watch them do it. So don't feel so bad. We can do it too.